Hello, my name is Trainmaster04 and welcome to yet another interesting out of the blue video and this being the 2023 volume one catalog review or just really a once over through the catalog. I will admit I have had a bit of rumors from my local dealership and also a few photos off of the OGR form so I do kind of have an idea of what to expect but still not a whole lot of details. So let's go ahead and get right into it. As you know, Lionel did announce back in November that the big boy was making a return, a Vision Line big boy was making a return back to the limelight. In this case, it being about eight years since 2014. So this year, the catalog is primarily being covered, the covering the Vision Line big boy. So let's go ahead and open up the catalog and see what we have to see. I do know that the Vision Line Big Boys are going to have a lot more features and also that a Dreyfus Hudson is coming into the lineup. So let's see what we've got to deal with. Hopefully there's not too many people viewing the catalog at one point in time and we can get it loaded up just fine. So alrighty, the catalog cover is quite interesting. So far, Lionel is staying with their typical theatrical theme of having two locomotives together, the two primary locomotives with some sort of scenery in the background. In this case, it is true, we are having a Dreyfus Hudson. Um, so let's go and see what we've got inside. Typical stuff. Oh yes, Lionel is also doing a raffle for one of the Vision Line big boys. Um, so far I've entered myself about a couple of times, so we'll see if any good luck comes my way. And the deadline for it is going to be March 1st of this year, and the winner will be announced on March 8th. So for more details, we'll get into it specifically coming up in this catalog. So right off the bat, as you can see, here is a possibility of a new locomotive and it being a Russian Decapod. So let's see what we got in store. Okay, starting off with the Vision Line Big Boys. So in, looks like this is engine number 4012. From our earliest days, Lionel has been celebrated for its ability to create the most innovative groundbreaking model train products in the world. In 2009, we proudly introduced the, a line of most authentic, technically advanced trains and rolling stock ever made, a line of products that enable you to fulfill the promise and vision of legacy vision line. Yada, yada, yada. So, yes, this will be a thoroughbred vision line locomotive. However, I will admit that I'm kind of bummed in the sense that Lionel isn't sticking with their original definition as a vision line model, one of a kind models that will never be reproduced ever again. Then again, I guess in some instances there, that, that rule can be stretched in particular to like a Pennsylvania CC20880 Malay or even the 21010 Santa Fe 3000s that I did a review on last year. I mean, those, it's been 10, over 10 years since those models have come out. So, I mean, I guess it wouldn't be too far stretch for another Vision Line Big Boy to come out. Okay, into the models themselves. Lionel is producing a, looks like a large number of these Big Boys in a variety of different row numbers than the original release back in 2014. So, starting at the left-hand page... We've got a modern excursion version of the big boy as we did get to see in the legacy version back in 2019. It looks like we do, this version is in a, let's see. Yes, okay, so for features, the Vision Line big boys and the modern ones I will have the pop-off steam effect, which has been seen in the Niagara's and other previous Vision Line locomotives. It's going to have the new four-digit addressing system, which I've heard rumors that the Cab 3 system has been delayed yet again and will not be coming out until July of this year. So quite a bit of a sad side to hear. It will also have the force coupler and depleting coal load. However, some of these models are oil burners, like the oil burning big boy you see here in the excursion version with the 3985 old tender. So in this case, if you want a big boy that has the depleting coal load like the original, I would suggest not getting the 4014 in this version. In this case, it looks like the excursion version has the big boy script up front, the gloss finished, and also the oil burning tender with all the new features. For price, ouch, it's a little bit expensive it looks like. 
right at $2,800. Originally, the original Vision Line Big Boys were around that same price, closer to $3,000. Yep, there it is. $2,900 for a normal Union Pacific Big Boy um, with the depleting coal load. So yeah, Lionel pretty much kept the same price as it was back then. So I guess that is a good, good news considering even when the market price up has gone extremely high. Lionel is still keeping the same original price since then. Um, besides 4014, we've got engine number 4000, the prototype herself, which is interesting. Um, line, it looks like Lionel in this rendition of number 4000 is making her in the after modification version um, instead of her as built version. So, so there's no radiator uh, or air compressor radiator pipes along the front handrails. Um, other Vision Line Big Boys, looks like we've got number 4002. Nice, nice, so everybody's got some variety. 4012 and 4014 as her coal version. Again, still different than the original Vision Line Big Boy, as I do have one. The original Vision Line Big Boy doesn't have darkened side rods, nor does it have safety valve steam and other various features, but it, and it's also at the as built version. So it has the radiator um, pipe work along the side of the handrails, which personally I think looks a little bit nicer than the without, though I understand this was just a feature, was something that UP realized didn't need to have. For specifications, let's see. Yep, same typical stuff, the four digit system, blow down steam, force coupler, road number specific details. And it looks like including pilot after coolers. Okay, so it may be some of these models will end up getting those after cooler radiators instead. Um, still 072 minimum curves and the enormous 32 inches. So same stuff. And also the surround sound speaker. Let's see. Looks like we also got a video. Let's see what we've got to show. And here we go. Okay, so it's going to be the same video as shown back in November. That's no big deal. Let's move on. Okay, more big boys. So in this case, it looks like we've got some more excursion passenger cars. And yep, as expected, the price tag is still pretty ugly for a four pack, $950, ouch. Lionel, you really could do better on that, especially for $450 on a two pack. I've seen many of these cars. I have the, ex I have the, um, Union Pacific Experience car that was put out in 2019. The quality is substandard, I would say, to previous cars. I mean, the bottom of the car itself does sag when I go and grab it. So that's not really good uh, considering how expensive these cars are. But besides a four pack, it looks like it's going to be a reissue of them. I mean, this is going to be probably going to be the same tooling. Hopefully the paint scheme will still be the same. And also a Station Sounds Diner and a two-pack Station Sounds Diner, 400, typical price. Um, more big boys in the sense. Um, we've got Experimental Locomotive number 4019. 4019 has had an interesting uh, life, if I remember correctly. She once was experimented as an oil burner, one of the first oil burn, burning big boys, but unfortunately was unsuccessful, so she was put back into coal. But she was also one of the more experiment, another experimental locomotive in the sense that UP was trying out smoke deflectors that were used on their 3900 class and also their 800 class, or FEF3s, uh, like 844 and 3985. So we got a 4019 in black that looks very snazzy. And getting into some more of the more interesting kinds, we've got some more of the second batch of big boys. Here we've got 4023, which is an LCCA exclusive. So I can see a lot of people in the LCCA being happy with that. Because the last 4023 we had was in 2014. And then even before that was the Joshua Lionel Cowan series, the first legacy big boy and legacy engine ever produced. Um, some more fantasy paint schemes and more passenger runs. Looks like we got a Greyhound Union Pacific Big Boy, which I can see that being very popular since the Greyhound is such a beautiful paint scheme. And another gray paint scheme that was typical on UP's Challengers. That is very sharp. Overall, I think Lionel will make a good sale on these. Big Boys have been very popular in all scales. I know Broadway Limited just came out with their N-Scale Big Boys and Paragon 4, so those will be interesting to see how Lionel comes out with these models. Um, a lot of variety. Oh my goodness, a Big Boy set. 
Now, this is kind of not surprising considering how Lionel's been liking their Vision line and Legacy sets. So let's go and dive in and see what we've got. So it looks like we have a first batch big boy, number 4008, with the radiator pipe work. And oh my goodness, the price tag on this set, $4,500. <laughs> this is not a set for the smallest modeler in the world. No, by no means. You got to have a good job for this set. Um, I think this set by, by many means is going to be some of the, probably going to be the biggest set Lionel has ever produced with the most expensive price tag. Um, but let's see, what we, let's dive in and see what we've got. So we got a big boy. Looks like we got three PFEs. Um, they are going to be, ah, they are going to be vision reefers. That's great. And also three more vision stock cars. Lionel's really been going off on those stock cars and seem to be turning out pretty nice. And a vision, a freight sounds box car. Lionel's been liking those too. And a vision caboose. So let's see what the vision caboose is. Ah, here we go. So we got two vision line cabooses. Um, load for me. And it looks like they're going to be priced at $300. So that, so it's nothing to sneeze about. So let's see what kind of stuff's inside. So no train is complete without a caboose. And train sound should be no different. These new cars display play the sounds of the rolling train in motion and are also programmed with user activated dialogue and radio chatter. There's even an air whistle to protect those backup moves. Okay, so these things are loaded. These action packed cars also feature LED illuminated interiors and marker lamps, an electro coupler, track IR sensor, great, I'm glad Lionel's continuing that, for use with sensor track die cast trucks and separately applied details to make them look as good as they'll sound. Why should the engineer have all the fun? Now you can have a voice to the conductor. He's in charge after all. Okay, so this actually is intriguing me. Um, it looks like these cabooses are the same MTH tooling that Lionel produced the, this, caboose, this same caboose about a year ago. And it looks like they're just modifying them and making them even better. So in the set itself, we've got the three PFEs, three UP yellow stock cars, which really do look good. A UP looks like a wartime propaganda uh, box car, which would be typical since these were the war babies of the Union Pacific, and a tan or maroon version of this set caboose. I mean, it's pretty darn cool, Lionel. I mean, the Vista Vision caboose or the Cupola Cam caboose and the Vista Vision. Vista domes have been pretty cool. So to see the Lionel really stepping up and putting a little bit more stuff into their cars is actually quite neat. Um, honestly, I don't know how this set's going to go well. I can see this set really being a hard thing to sell considering that it's such an expensive set, $4,500. Who has that money in this day and time to really go and buy this set? I mean, in consideration, if you already had the PFEs, you already had the stock cars, all you had to do is just go and buy, and you already had a big boy, then you're already set. And I mean, you could probably make the same set a lot cheaper by buying each individual item separately and just be fine. But then again, the prices could vary between uh, dealership to dealership. Okay, so Lionel is coming out with some more PFE or steel sided reefers. It's great. Everybody's wanting some more of these. I know the last time Lionel produced them, they turned out to be pretty good. So it looks like we're at $500 for, the, for, for them um, for a three pack. I mean, that's a little high considering that only one car it has the electronics within them. And then the other two are just standard steel sided reefers, but oh well. Um, you can still go and find them probably cheaper online and definitely in the secondhand market when things cool down. Um, it looks like we're going to have the Santa Fe map and Herald beautiful cars. I use them a lot on my layout. We've got some Fruit Growers Express from the Pennsylvania or Northeastern region. Then we got the Great Northern. I know a lot of people like that. Great Northern Herald. And then, of course, if you need to add some more PFEs behind your big boy, you got some more PFEs. Stock cars. If the set didn't show, we've got some more stock cars. In this case, it looks like... Yes, they're actually a little different. In this case, we've got sheep cars instead of cattle cars. Um, so instead of cows mooing with the equillable whistle, we've now got sheep baying, which is <laughs> gives it a little bit more of a different feel. 
For road names, it looks like we got some Denver and Rio Grande Western. I know some of you out there were hoping for some Rio Grande stuff. I know I was because it's some unique rolling stock. Some Penn C in the typical red UP so you can continue to grow your set a little bit more. And Texas and Pacific. Honestly, I really like them. Um, I think the Union Pacific might be a future item in the future. Uh, maybe the Rio Grande for myself. I do have... My local hobby shop does have some Santa Fe stock cars from the previous run of these, and they're kind of calling my name. Okay, moving on into the Legacy Steam. So not Vision Line, and based on the cover, it looks like, yep, we're going to get some Dreyfus Hudson's. Hooray! So I looked on, I will admit, I did know about these Dreyfus Hudson's coming out a lot sooner because the night before, I clicked on a link to the OGR forum, and it was all about this. It showed the catalog cover with a Dreyfus Hudson and everybody going crazy. And I can see why, because the last time they produced a Dreyfus Hudson period from Lionel was in 2002 and it was a TMCC version. And everybody since then has been asking for a legacy and updated Dreyfus Hudson. Now I do have some insight about this, this model. This model is not former MTH tooling and is kind of brand new. Um, the model itself, the frames, is going to be the J3A's uh, Hudson frames and whatnot. So it's going to be the same thing under the hood. However, the body shells are going to be completely new. Lionel decided to go on down this route so that they can, so to speak, make sure it they can get more features and different varieties, as we'll see in a minute, I imagine. So let's look at the features. So standard steam features, whistle steam, hooray, and it looks like it's going to be farther back so it won't be interfered by any of the smokestack, which that's been kind of a problem with a few more locomotives. Um, some locomotives looks like they'll have the water scoop effect with the PT tenders. So that feature's coming back again in the Hudson lineup. Uh, also has a standard 11 inch tender for those who like a smaller tender. Um, and a minimum curve radius of 072. That's kind of interesting. Um, if I remember correctly, the original or the last run of these New York Central Hudsons were 054, if I remember correctly. I think they were 054 curve radius with the normal tender. So I'm, but the Niagara's were 072, but then again, that was a northern and it also had that long centipede tender. So I imagine the 072 minimum curve radius, it was just easier for Lionel to go and say, oh, the locomotives are 072 curve radius because of the extremely long tender. But anyway, let's get into the different look at the different locomotives that we've got. So we've got a 5445 with a PT tender with a black stripe. That's nice. A New York Central 5445 again, but with a different tender with the 11 inch tender with no New York Central. That really reminds me of the New Haven, New Hampshire and Hartford. Uh, what are they? I-5 class locomotives. That kind of blank side view tender with the gray that like that it's nice um what's this engine 5449 with a similar with a more bluish striped tender that's nice and it looks like these tenders are also similar to the mth uh, dreyfus hudson's where they have the streamlined upper part upper portion i hope i really hope that the coal hatches do open and close and you actually have a real coal load inside and also that the area between the coupler and the back panel of the tender actually has the description warning labels as the MTH model that Eric at Eric's trains reviewed. I really like that engine and I wish I kind of I wish I was old enough to go and get it but unfortunately I couldn't. Um, something else that's interesting is that some of these engines are also got some different types of wheels such as let's see or actually, let's just look at the description for a second. So, 1938 20th Century Limited, the Hudson is finally back in the catalog with all new tooling, which allows accurate looks for both as designed and modified versions. 5449 and 5452 will feature the, the full streamlining with either box pock or Skolan disc driver drive wheels as appropriate. It didn't take long for some of the streamlining to be cut back, however, 5445 shows a little trimming in its 1939 Mercury dress, where we're offering 5445 again and 5447 with the impressive PT tenders as well. The enormous tanks and further reduction of the cowling didn't, did more for operations than appearance, but they, did, they are still impressive machines. 
Last but not least, we have one fantasy scheme which reverses the colors, better match the later look of the New York Central's fleet. If only the prototypes had kept their styling long enough for the New York Central to have tried the same. All these locomotives feature full legacy and Bluetooth control, as well as whistle steam for the first time. All three version versions that include the PT tender will also have our water scoop effect in the tender to simulate the operation through track pans at high speed. Fan driven fans have driven requesting a return of these beauties for many years so don't miss the chance to add the locomotive of the century to your roster. Oh, I can definitely agree with that. Okay, so looking at the skirting, let's go back and look at the skirting. So it looks like, yeah, it looks like around the firebox areas where the skirting is trimmed. Okay. And also the pilot cup, the coupler on the pilot is exposed. Okay. So, yeah, these are going to be pretty neat. So this is going to be 54, 54, 54 is the Mercury, I think. Let me see. Yes, it's going to be the... 1939 trimmed style in the mercury paint scheme with the skull and disc driver. Those are nice. And we get into the actual 20th Century Limited. Okay, so here we have, it looks like the, maybe the 1938 version? Yes, it looks like we got the 1938 Dreyfus Hudson with the 11 inch tender. Number 5452. Okay, with skull and disc drivers, full streamlining, beautiful. That's the typical style we are used to. And also some 20th Century Limited cars. Okay, so Lionel did the good, made the good step of making passenger cars to go and match with their locomotives. I know a lot of people on the forum have been saying that, oh my goodness, are, is Lionel going to make the paint chips right? Are they gonna make the paint scheme right? And more importantly, are they gonna make the locomotive match other previous cars? Well, in this case, it looks like Lionel's gonna make their own cars and just get it over with which is nice um price tag yeah 950 dollars for the four pack 450 for the two pack and 650 dollars for a two pack that includes a station sounds diner ouch but it does give you a pretty darn complete train for five, six, seven, an eight car train so i mean hey might not be a bad idea for the price tag, let's see, for an 11-inch tender, we've got $1,700. That's a little high. I mean, that's typical for Northern, but it being new tooling, eh, it's a little iffy. And $1,800 for a PT tenor. Ouch. But then again, there is more smoke units. So if you really want a 20th Century Limited, you might have to sacrifice a few things because that's a little steep. Okay, next stuff, Russian decapods. Great. So... As shown earlier in the front of the catalog, we got some decapods, Russian decapods. Now these are the MTH tooled decapods. So now we finally know where this tooling went to. I know MTH did a good job on these Russian decapods, especially considering how many times they produced it in PS2, PS3, in Western Maryland, Santa Fe, yada, yada, yada. So it's nice to see their backs. So let's see what we've got to deal with. Um, new tooling, yeah, it's MTH. Legacy rail sounds, wire tether. Okay, that's good to hear, because these engines are pretty small, 18 inches at a minimum curve radius of 050, of 042. So these engines are, I would say, considered a small but medium to medium sized locomotive. It's a heavy hitter, still have enough um, power to go and pull anything you want. And looks like the price tags aren't that bad either, considering it's not all redone tooling. Um, it also looks like we got some that are swinging bells, such as this Erie, number 2445, has a swinging bell. I did hear rumors that it has whistle steam, so let's see. Um, these models perfectly suited for any size available for the first time, big enough to have large a large road locomotive look while being small enough to work on smaller layouts with tighter curves and shorter trains. At first, the prototypes related to foreign details, including handrails on the outside of the running boards, but it... Um, I don't know. I've heard rumors that these engines had whistle steam, but it doesn't look like they're going to have them. I mean, considering how some of these engines have to have room enough for the motor towards the back in the cab, firebox, glow, yada, yada, yada. And then on top of that, having enough detail for this or having enough room for the electronics for the swinging bell, I honestly don't know if these are going to have whistle steam. I mean, that might just be pushing, especially considering where the whistles are located. If it was closer towards the front, maybe, but the placement of the domes, yeah, I don't think those are going to have whistle steam, but for $1,300, it's not bad. 
Um, for some celebrities, we got Frisco number 1630. This I'm tempted as well to get because 1630 is a surviving locomotive, especially in runs up north and is a very nice looking locomotive. Um, other locomotives, it looks like this page is going to have all swinging bell locomotives since it's closer, since it's closer to the cab. We've got the Minneapolis, uh, Minneapolis Northfield and Southern number 505, the Reading or the, yeah, Philadelphia and Reading Company, number 1162. I can see a lot of people liking that, especially with the added handrails. That really looks a little different and a little foreign. Uh, the Seaboard Line, number 544. A lot of more Eastern stuff. People like that. And then a USA, number 1918. I can see a lot of people who have World War II era layouts or something a little bit sooner, like in late World War I, somewhere in between. It has a military layout. We'll definitely like that. So that will be neat. Overall... Not a bad looking model. I'm glad Lionel got this too. And it's glad to see that there can be continued. Okay, we're back into the 10 wheeled. So we got more decapods. In the list case, it looks like we got some Pensy deca decapods. Again, they looks like they are the MTH tooling. Yep, yeah, legacy rail sounds with specific details. This has whistle steam, which it should because these engines are beasts, bigger, way bigger than the other locomotives. Yeah. So it looks like Lionel's producing two different types of tenders as the Pensy used and varied between each locomotive. In this case, the locomotive itself is 13 and a quarter inches, um, but they're going to have the short end tender that is eight and a quarter inches and then a long haul tender that is 13 and three quarters of an inches tender at 054. Let's see if Lionel, no, it looks like Lionel didn't do the Rail King version. It looks like they're doing the full scale version of the Decapods, which is good because They've got a little bit more detail. They're bigger and they just look a lot better. And also what MTH did what was what was interesting with their Rail King models was they, instead of having the front and the rear drivers be flanged and then the center three be flangeless, what they did to really make sure that the engine could go around shorter curves, and if I remember correctly, 042 and 031, if the tender was far enough back, they would put the, the flange, the rear flange, on this driver instead of the very last one. So basically the rear driver wasn't doing the work and all you had was a Mikado say, going around a curve and that last wheel can move around freely. But anyway, let's look at these locomotives that we've got. So it looks like we got two um, short tenders, which actually the tenders look pretty good. It looks like I got, they've got some pretty good looking coal loads with a dog house, I hope it's lit. Um, and also the detail specifics. Looks like we got two different types of details on top of the boiler at the smoke box. Looks like we've got a version where the dynamo is behind the headlamp and the headlamp is on a deck in front of the smoke box. And then it looks like we got a, the second version is a little bit less colorful. It doesn't have a red cab roof and a red platform on top of the tender and it has the dynamo in the front and the headlamp on top of the smoke box so similar to like a m1b and an m1a uh, price tag fifteen hundred dollars i mean it is a big engine and it's got a lot of stuff in it i mean it'd be a little bit nicer to have a swinging bell uh, for that price tag but oh well for the long haul tenders it looks like yeah it's the typical long haul tender enormous and with a more streamlined doghouse with antennas on top okay and no price difference hey that's nice um yeah those are gonna go well and on to some of the biggest engines that i was really looking forward to the 2900 class santa fe locomotives i did lionel has been teasing everybody saying that lot that they had required the tooling for this model and finally they have arrived yes Lionel really did hit it off last catalog or last year's catalog with the 210.4s, the 5001 class, which you can go and check a, take a look at my product review that I recently uploaded uh, last week on. Um, so let's take a dive in and see what kind of interesting stuff Lionel's got in show for us. Oh, come on. Uh, for these models, I've been really looking forward to this because I'm a really big fan of 2926's restoration. Okay. So it looks like we got Legacy Rail Sounds Fan Driven Smoke Unit, so I imagine it would be an updated version model as seen in the 5001 class, two te Texans, in the sense that it's got updated electronics, updated details, and whatnot, and hence being whistle steam as well. Uh, let's see. So for standard features, it looks like, yeah, we got the whistle steam. The length is 31 and a quarter inches. I mean, yeah, that's a big engine, especially with that big old 
old Bart, old Tinder. Whew. But a minimum curve radius of 031. That is interesting. I know MTH, when they produced the 2900 class, they produced two different types of toolings. And PS1, they produced a scale version of the 2900 class. That model was pretty darn detailed and it was a full thoroughbred. And then the second model that they produced in PS1 as well was Rail King. And the Rail King version got updated closer to the later PS2, PS3 stuff. And it had some pretty darn good details. But let's look at the uh, locomotive itself. Yeah, that doesn't, yeah, that doesn't look like a Rail King model. It looks too big to be a Rail King model. Um, but it is an MTH representation because you can see the uh, their MTH's drawbar, and it has a few more details typical to an MTH model, um, like the uh, whistle cord, which the, um, well, no, the Lionel version didn't have a whistle cord or a bell cord. But, yeah, this doesn't look like the Rail King version. I wonder if this is going to be an updated scale version, and Lionel made a typo on the 031, but if it is a Rail King model, then the price tag, oh my gosh, oh, $1,800 for a Rail King model, that is a ripoff, oh my gosh. So based on the price tag, I would have to say it's a, have to be a scale model because with the price tag, and I mean the electronics, if it was a Rail King model, why isn't it priced and put over into the semi-scale stuff? Because that's ridiculous. But it does look like the model is the updated version from PS3, so it's the most recent version. And then looking at the stack, it looks like it's not changeable. And Lionel didn't say it was changeable. No, they didn't say it was changeable. So I wonder if it's the physical extending stack that MTH did in PS3 with their PS3 model where you can actually physically extend the stack up and down. That would be cool. But anyway, enough of the conversation. Let's go over in the different types of models that Lionel's producing. So first off, it looks like, yes, we're getting the 2926, as they should, and a restoration version. And it looks like it's going to have the gloss paint, polished side rods, and a silver smoke box. I hope, I really do hope that silver smoke box isn't just a blinding white and is more dulled down. Because, as we all know, Lionel has had a habit in the past of getting the paint scheme extremely wrong especially at the smoke box front and it just looking a whole lot awful so let's hope it's gonna be just fine i may get that engine but at eighteen hundred dollars yeah that's not looking too pretty uh we've also got 2903s again seventeen hundred dollars but in this case it's more of a freight road engine with the black inside rods and the darkened smoke box front which if i remember correctly some of these engines are actually still in existence yeah, retirements came in the nineteen in the late nineteen fifties with most of the roster scrapped in the by the end of nineteen fifty nine. Six twenty nine hundreds were spared and donated to museums and communities. However, today, excuse me, twenty nine twenty six has been restored to operation, and both in service and restored versions of the locomotive are offered here, available for the first time with legacy Bluetooth and whistle steam. These big northerns are a must-have for any fan of the Santa Fe or big steam in general, and perfect power for your trains or reefers, of uh, trains of reefers, passengers, or priority freight. We're proud to offer this model in three in-service road, road numbers, each a surviving loco. Okay, so yes, um, 2903 is a survivor in this, or I would assume is a survivor in this case, since it said in-service survivor. Uh, we've got 2912 in a similar condition. Uh, 2926 with a matte finish, dark inside rods with dark graphite smoke box, which I'm almost more tempted to get the this version of 2926 because of its already being a dark inversion and I go ahead and weather it. Um, I know that would be crazy to go and do, especially considering it's an $1,800 locomotive, but I mean, Santa Fe did have a few dirty locomotives and that would look pretty darn cool. I've seen some pretty cool Santa Fe locomotives like that. Okay, into the fantasy schemes, um, we've got a Santa Fe war bonnet, which is a little bit of a nice difference in the contrast that would definitely go good with the black bonnet version of the 210 fours. Um, I mean, it really looks pretty snazzy with the silver, red, yellow, and red paint scheme against the black instead of a more black and red, yellow paint scheme. I mean, that looks pretty darn sharp. And also the famous blue goose. Now, unfortunately, I was really hoping that Lionel purchased the 3460 class tooling, the 464 Hudsons that MTH produced, 
especially the Blue Goose Streamlined 3460 herself, but it looks like it's not going to happen this time. Um, Lionel did produce 3765, the real actually the real second Blue Goose that Santa Fe never actually came out with, but had planned for. Um, so, and that turned out pretty good. So I hope this one will turn out pretty good as well. I mean, it looks very stunning in the artist rendition, and I think it'll turn out pretty good, especially that with that war bonnet. But yeah, these in Northerns will end out pretty good. Okay, Camelbacks. We've got some more Camelback, Camelbacks. Um, Let's see, it looks like we got another camel back in the Christmas section, which we'll get to in a minute, but I'll try to start picking things up a little bit. So we, this video doesn't run on too long. So similar stuff, we got a 17 and a half inch locomotive, 031 curve, so another small legacy locomotive. Um, it's another run of the last previous stuff, so it should be the same stuff in the sense that it has legacy steam, um, whistle steam, whatnot, just different road names like the Delaware and Lackawanna, Erie with a Russian iron boiler. That's always a fan. Um, has a lot of fans with that kind of gray tur turquoise boiler. Lehigh, Lehigh, New England. Yeah, a lot of Eastern Railroad since these engines really ran on the East Coast. Atlantic City Railroad. Yeah. And the Pensy. I mean, good looking locomotives. And for $700 for a 10 wheeler, eh, not bad. I mean, similar to the 280s that Lionel produced and came out not a couple months ago. So, not bad. Okay, diesel locomotives. That's it for the steam. I was a little disappointed. I was hoping for a little bit more, but then again, Lionel did give us a lot of different options and a lot of big expensive steam. So, I mean, it was pretty darn good. Um, diesels. Okay, so we got some E8s and E9s AA sets. So kind of a follow-up from the previous E6, E7 sets. Um, so pretty much continuing with that theme, it looks like. We've got some Southern Pacific AA sets for with the bloody nose paint scheme. Beautiful models. Um, for $1,200 for an AA set, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Um, 036, yeah, they've got that each pilot can swivel. So yeah, that can do it just fine. We got a New York Central in the later teal green paint scheme. That's going to be pretty. Um, hopefully it's not too bright. A Southern Tuxedo Black. Oh, I love that paint scheme. That's a really nice paint scheme. And then an early Amtrak version. That is very nice. I can see a lot of people who like the rainbow era of Amtrak getting this set, especially um, since a lot of people like commuter modern trains in the early 70s, 80s era, so that'll be nice. Aberdeen, Carolina, and Western is returned yet again with some more, with a couple more cars, a two-pack for 650 and also a dome car for 300. I can see a lot of people getting happy with that, and also a double AA set in the E8s, so that'll be nice. Um, out of the E units, we're into some more ES44ACs. All these big engines have been pretty darn popular, so it's nice to see that they've come back with them. And it looks like with some older paint schemes that we haven't seen in a while, so let's take a look. We got the typical green and white Burlington Northern paint scheme before the merger with Santa Fe. That's nice. Price tag, oh, good heavens, six hundred or $750 for a powered and $550 for a dummy. Ouch. That is going to hurt a lot of people's feelings, I can see, since these engines are not getting any cheaper. But they are pretty darn big. Um, hmm, that's going to be a mixture. It looks like we got the Burlington Northern, a BNSF, and actually those B unit, or those dummies are actually super bases. So maybe that's a little bit more accountable. So they've actually got some sound and light, so that's nice. Um, Chicago Northwestern and the Operation Lifesaver, some people like it. Um, a Conrail, that's nice. Ooh, Kansas City Southern. A lot of people are going to like these Kansas City Southerns, um, especially since uh, Canadian Pacific did, purchased them last year and did the merger. So I'm kind of disappointed that there hasn't been any new paint schemes with Kansas City Southern in the real life in the sense that they've been merged. I wonder if Canadian Pacific's wanted to keep them as a subsidy and leave them as their own deal since they're already established, but we'll see. Ooh, wait a minute. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Here we have a normal non-powered unit with the Kansas City Southerns, and it looks like the price tags have gone down to $400. Okay, that's a little bit nicer. And non... Okay. So the non-powered features do not have electronics in them, so I wonder if they will or will not have any lights in them. Since it says no electronics, I doubt it. 
NW2 switchers. Hey, we got some more NW2 switchers. And it looks like we got some more variety. Um, similar road names that we typically see and a few other different details. So let's take a look. Um, we've got a price tag of $600. Yeah, a little high, but they are, looks like they're pretty well detailed. We've got a nice Great Northern, which I really like, especially with the uh, filter tops. Those things always look good when the smoke comes out. And interesting thing enough, number boards. I've never seen an NW2 with a number board on top and a strobe light on top with an antenna. So I guess it's a radio controlled motor, locomotive instead. Just speaking of Ohio and the typical blue and yellow paint scheme, always a favorite. Um, we've got a Detroit Terminal, that's interesting, a Burlington Northern to go with your ES44 AC Burlington Northern locomotive, again with number board, still interesting. Indiana Harbor Belt, another favorite of a lot of people, and the Lehigh Valley, which is really stunning with that black, yellow, and red paint scheme, really nice. What are we doing on time, 11.30? Okay, we're doing just fine. Uh, GP20s, got some more GP20s in Burlington, the Burlington route, a price tag of $650, too expensive in my opinion um, but then again dealers will probably take it down a little bit uh, Santa Fe do like that freight yellow and blue paint scheme the Kyle line I've never heard of them chime down in the comments if y'all have got any information on the Kyle line I imagine it's in the description but we're kind of running out of time uh, Penn Central a lot of people out there like Penn Central especially with different themes and whatnot because um, Penn Central had so many different paint schemes over the short time period that they existed Cotton Belt yeah, some people like it, some people don't, especially the SP people since Cotton Belt was part of the uh, SP. And then the Kansas City Terminal. That's a pretty yellow engine. Okay, out of the diesels and into the sets. So back into the Camelbacks, we've got a, a Lehigh Valley, San, Valley set for $1,100. Okay, so Lionel is going a little bit, is sticking with a bit of a better price tag for this set. And I mean, it has... Three coal hopper scale and a MT8 and two MTH formerly tooled cars. In this case, the Lehigh Valley bobber caboose, which I really like. And the other bobber cabooses from the previous catalog just finally came out. Maybe I'll pick one up and do a quick review on it. And then also a 19th century wood sided box car. Okay, this set I like. I really like, especially it has $1,100 price tag with a lot of cars attached to it, especially since my railroad is a southern coal mining town. Those coal hoppers are looking pretty good. On to other sets, we got an NW2 set, the Union Hot Metal Train Legacy set. It looks like it's going to be a big set by the by the things of it at $1,300. Okay, let's see what we got. We got an NW2 switcher, uh, two gondolas, looks like they're going to be buffer cars, and two pot hot metal train or hot metal cars oh okay and a caboose okay not a bad set not a bad set at all the hot metal cars themselves are 200 dollars eek but it does have the glowing hot load so i mean they're still keeping the same feature that they used to have in the past that's nice and iron hippo legacy set yes so the i1s or the l no i1s were called iron hippos and they were pretty much used on Pincy's drag freights, double heading or even triple heading, as y'all most of y'all know. So it looks like Lionel's going towards that kind of theme with a oh mercy, a twenty-three hundred dollar set. Oh goodness, this is going to be another one of those humongous sets that is going to be going to have to take the right buyer for. But it looks like we got typical two ten o decapod that we saw earlier with a short haul tender with the dynamo up front instead of on top of the boiler. And one, two, three, four, five, six, six coal hoppers. That's not bad with the Pennsylvania Keystone Herald and a Vision cabin car. Okay, so that's not bad. And the cabooses themselves are, yeah, $300. That's been how it's usually been for the past few cars with those cupola, cupola. Or no, actually, this is the Vision car, so it's got the sounds in them. Oh, okay. So it's got the sounds in them in the LED. So, okay, $300. That's nice. And I guess that's where the price tag goes up. Because and also these coal hoppers do have a lot of detail, so okay. And then for a two pack of these coal hoppers, right at two hundred dollars. Yeah, that's how it's been for the past few years at one hundred dollars a piece. Uh, more sets. We got a E eight or E nine set. I think that's a E eight. I think that's an E eight. Independent Rock Island Quad Cities Rocket Train set with a beautiful Independence paint scheme that is really stunning for a thousand dollars. That's not a bad price with two passenger cars. And then also a 2900 class Santa Fe set. 
with a 2913 up front. It looks like it's going to be the in-road service with the dark inside rods and graphite boiler front. Um, and then three vision line stock or steel sided reefers with a vision caboose at, ouch, $2,500. That's, yeah, right up there with the other sets. It's um, steam sets, except the Lehigh Valley is going to be expensive. In the rolling stock, here we've got the scale stuff. We've got a Canadian Pacific trailer stuff. Got some gondolas and various road names, prices, uh, 160 and 120, not bad. Um, grain door hoppers, we have, or grain door box cars, excuse me. We haven't seen those in a while, so it's a nice change to get some of them with different road names. You typically see at $110. A little expensive for a scale box car, but eh, it's okay. Then we got some cabin cars. It looks like these are not the vision styled ones, but are the MTA, the former MTH tooled ones. So we've got them at $150. So in comparison, it looks like the price tag to get the electronics put in them is about $50. A little steep for a standard caboose, I'd say. Um, more coal hoppers to add to your fleet. Again, at the $200 price tag with some more different road names that you typically see. And then this oddball up top, a Milwaukee Road Scale milk car at $100. Honestly, I am very disappointed with how the last milk cars have turned out, especially with the trucks and the couplers. I hate my milk cars couplers because they are really stubborn going around curves, especially with normal rolling stocks. I've thought about changing, going and finding an older milk car that has the correct and better, um, better couplers that are metal instead of the plastic ones that just operate better because I'm a little frustrated with them, but the car itself looks good. Um, so that's good at least. We also got some more rotary dump cars. Um, well, I've been really doing them a lot. I mean, you can't have too many dump cars and get those mega power, mega coal trains for four pack of $310. Yeah, that's about standard. Then we get into the standard O products. So still scale size, but a little bit less detail. So a cheaper price tag. We got some center beam flap cars, rerun of some previous road names in addition to some more at $65. Not bad. More standard O, 50-foot box cars, pretty much all of the same stuff that we've seen in the past, so just a reissue of stuff. And then we get into the traditional O, so starter sets and new stuff. And if you can see up in the right-hand corner, we got a little sneak peek for some new stuff. And right in the center, a new set. Same standard stuff, new command control, same command control stuff, explaining how Line Chief Plus 2.0 works. And into the new Steam. So the new Steam, um, we've got a rerun of the 060 tank engines, which those have been on fire a lot lately, and also a re-release of the Mikado Juniors and the updated Line Chief Plus 2.0 stuff, which is nice. We've got a Milwaukee Road, Burlington and Quincy, that's snazzy, Union Pacific and Pennsylvania, so pretty much typical road names. Now they do have a higher price tag of $700, so yowza, they've got a little, they've got a high price tag on these. Um, I mean, you're basically buying a Team CC Mikado Jr. with four chuffs, per revolution, Odyssey speed control. I mean, an electro coupler and fan driven smoke. I mean, if you really want a Mikado Jr., I might, you might want to go and look at a uh, older Team CC Mikado Jr. instead of one of these. But if you really want a Line Chief Plus 2.0, there you go. Uh, more tooled products. We got some Bud Rail Cars. We really haven't seen these in a while, so these are quite new. And it looks like Lionel's offering them for in single and two packs, which is nice. So for a single, they are $400. In a two pack, they are $600. So, or not, so you get a $200 exchange, which in this case, it looks like the two pack, one powered, one non-powered, which you would expect. Um, looks like for command, we've got, yeah, Lion Chief Plus 2.0 features, typical stuff, rail sounds, gasoline engine. Um, voice control, fan driven smoke, yeah, and a uh, dual, ah, two motors in the power unit. So you'll have enough power to get around your layout just fine with command control, metal frames, directional lighting. So yeah, I can see these going quite well because there's a lot of people out there that like the butt rail cars and the details look fine for the price tag. Um, New Haven stuff. So yeah, so there'll be a few of those sold out. ET44 ACs, their Line Chief Plus 2.0, $400. If you want something a little bit cheaper for big diesels, there you go. More reruns of GP20s and NW2s. And then we get into something that I was actually not expecting and kind of excited about. And it is Disney's 100th anniversary. And this, and 
For many years, Lionel has been attached to Disney in one shape or another. And in 1934 being the time when Disney and Lionel actually came together for the very first time. So let's see what we've got. We've got a 100th anniversary Disney passenger set, which unfortunately is Lion Chief. I can see a lot of people having fun with that. Um, it looks like it does have a nice little finish and different things like that for a price tag of $530. A little steep for a specialty set, but yeah. A couple box cars, so if you can't get the locomotive, you can get the box car. Oh goodness, we got an illuminated box car that is $150 with illuminated Disney 100 logo. Okay, so it's got a few electronics in it. And then a customized celebration personalized box car for this typical, typical price of $100. And then we got some more character box cars in the same black and white theme. Uh, Disney, Mickey, Goofy, Minnie Mouse, yeah, Donald Duck. So that's nice. And a Disney theater building, which is, again, in TH Tooling. And this is the part that I've been looking for, I was not expecting, and I'm very happy about. Lionel is reproducing the original 1934 hand, Mickey and Minnie hand car. And I am really happy. I have always loved the original hand cars, but always couldn't find one in the greatest condition that I liked because the castings for Minnie and Mickey themselves weren't really the greatest quality. But I, then again, Lionel sold them for a dollar. So what can you expect in 1934? Um, the price tag is going to be a lot more than a hundred than a, than a dollar. It's going to be ten times more at a hundred or no, hundred times more at a hundred dollars. Um, it looks like the construction is going to be metal construction. It's going to be wound up instead of um, with clockwork instead of being modified to be electric. Um, hand paint characters have the dinging bell. And it's also going to come with an eight-piece set of 027 curve. So really, uh, Lionel sticking with the original roots of the hand car, which originally came with just a loop of track, as you can see in this little ad up top. Um, so I really hope Lionel reproduces the box as well because that'll be nice. Um, clicking on the link on below, it shows the same set, but also the other variations that they're producing. Oh my gosh, they're producing some nice new ones. Um, they're obviously producing them because Lionel made different varieties over the years, depending on what they had at the time. They're making the traditional red and the orange that you commonly see, and then the more rare green and maroon. But on top of that, they're also producing a nickel-plated version of it for the anniversary which i'm really looking forward to as a collector and probably highly going to be on it's going to high, probably going to be high on my list of getting because as a collector that's going to be gone really quick and also the red one because it's the most it's going to be the more common one because people like because that's what you see more often in the original but it's just what came out in the time so i'll definitely get the red one and the nickel plated one depending on how funds come around at the time Okay, let's pick it up here. Um, more starter sets. Again, we got the Woody, Toy Story Frozen 2. And then we got a new starter set, and it being a Willy Wonka themed, it looks like it's going to be themed on the original movie, not the redone version. So there's probably a few people out there that like that. And we got a few access, an accessory and a few cars to go with it. Not bad. Um, I can see that going well with in Christmas time with friends and family. Um, Thomas and Friends stuff, always popular. Some new John Deere stuff to add to your John Deere family train set, such as a tractor flatbed. I can see a lot of farmers liking that who have farming layouts. And a flagpole stand. Um, Harry Potter. We've got some more Harry Potter stuff. Typically, we've got the same set over and over again. But we've got some more different house-themed crest cars. Um, it looks like we've got each coach is decorated with it. Yes. So we've got Gryffindor, Slytherin, Heaven Puff, yeah. And... Ravenclaw, so that's I can see a lot of people getting all those at one time. And the price tag, 90 bucks. That's not bad. Not bad for a British-styled coach to go with your passenger car set. Um, Halloween. I know a lot of people like the Halloween stuff. Um, we've got a couple new accessories such in a car, such as a double stack with some Halloween graffiti, a Frankenstein monster gateman, um, a bar. So a lot of people like that. Um, also, Lime's producing a Line Chief Plus 2.0 Mikado. And a few other cars, theme, different themed cars. I'm not typically a fan of horror movies, so <laughs> I'm definitely going to be avoiding all this stuff. Um, more re-releases of the same old sets that we've had in the past. Same accessories, so people can go and get a second set. Um, NASA stuff, the only new thing that we got was a James Weber Space Telescope, or James Webb, not Weber, uh, Space Telescope set, um, which is a nice little nod to the telescope that was just sent out. 
And then we also got some new Area 51 stuff. We still got the same old set, but we've got a hazardous material barrel set and also barrel loader. That's pretty nifty. An Area 51 scale hot metal car with a green glowing radioactive material and also an Area 51 themed drive-in dinner diner that is also MTH tooled, which is nice to see that this diner is still in existence because that was a very popular thing when MTH was around and I can imagine still is going to be today. Budweiser, I'm not at the age of 21, so I really can't get any of this stuff, but it looks like Lionel's produced some more of this stuff, such as some semi-scale reef, woodside reefers, a trailer train car, and also a brew hut, as they call it. Um, some of the same old stuff, but also a Budweiser brewery, which I thought was interesting in O-scale. I know they made one in HO, so it's nice to see one in O-scale. And here we go. A new starter set has come into the, one of the new starter sets have come into the lineup. And in this case, it is with MTH's former Rail King 280, loosely based on the Pensy H10 locomotive. Um, it was a huge success with MTH. Lionel, or MTH used it all the time. Um, for a price tag of 450 with an MTH diecast locomotive, um, hopefully still be diecast three cars, that's not bad. And then also you can add on a uh, New York Central Peacemaker merchandise box car. That's nice to see that's coming back. So yeah, I could see that going well with set users. And here we go into a kind of a more collector item set. We've got the Gold Mountain Line Chief Bluetooth set. It's a price tag of $470, a little expensive. It uses the American type or general styled American type locomotive with smoke, um, has the typical cars that Lyle's been using and putting out the flatbed with tarps over and the two western themed coaches for Central Pacific Railroad and also a pretty nifty tank car I can see a lot of people getting on the side I know a few people that'll probably get that set up for their own collection and then a Texas special the beautiful red and silver passenger train with yellow striping has made a return unfortunately it's not in the scale series or even in the line chief plus 2.0 but instead is in an FT variant so for this set, you're looking at $500, which is not bad for a beautiful set. Lionel had been selling out of the Santa Fe Super Chief set, so I can see these being a huge success as well, especially with the add-on cars. Man, what a beautiful set. Um, then we really get into some of the same old stuff. We've got the Santa Fe War Bonnet auto, uh, auto rack set with the cars. Lionel still continuing with the general set, the or the Great Locomotive Anniversary set, which is always nice to see because I didn't get to get that one just quite yet. Lionel Lines, Line Chief set, Freight set, just pretty much the same old stuff um, through here. Another uh, same graffiti train. They are producing some new accessories for the first responder set. Um, nothing much there. Oh, here we go. And speaking of the Super Chief set, they are producing a new Super Santa Fe Super Chief 75th anniversary box car for $95. That looks pretty darn nifty. Hopefully I'll be able to get, snag one of those in the near future. And also a few new military stuff to go with your military train, such as this Marine Patriot Salute uh, Gateman. That's nice. On to some Lion Chief individual locomotives since we have the 280s from MTH we've got them individually in this case we got them in Nick Plate Road, Western Maryland, Santa Fe, and Chesapeake and Ohio. The price tag is a little steep but if they are die cast metal it could be a little bit more reasoned with at $330 and we've also got some FTs in the Santa Fe blue and yellow freight paint scheme, Pennsylvania Tuscan red, and New York Central at $300 so not a bad price. Same 44 tonners, Dash 8s, 44 tonners just came in not too long ago. And we also got some TMC, TMCC maintenance of way cars. In this case, they are rail bonders. I can see a few people getting some of those for definitely $150. That's not a bad motorized vehicle. Got some more Justice League and different themed stuff, such as Looney Tunes, Pixar. Some new Angela Trotta Thomas box cars. We've got the Texas Special and also the general box car. I really like them both at $85. Not bad. Not bad at all. Same Ford products. Patriotic stuff. Lionel still producing the same stuff over and over again. Um, a few new military box cars in the sense of the Battle of Midway. And, a few, and three more presidential box cars. Now you can add Millard Fillmore, John Tyler, and Zachary Taylor to y'all's collection because I know those have been pretty popular. 
a 50th anniversary of the Chessie special of the Chessie system. I can see a lot of people getting that, especially those who like the Chessie system, and a couple of semi-scaled double stack or maxi stack containers. Some more personal Lionel's still continuing their personalized stuff, both the licensed and unlicensed stuff. And then we get into the Christmas stuff. Christmas stuff is pretty much the same. We still have the typical Polar Express freight and passenger set. Um, we do have some Polar Express themed Bud cars, which I can definitely see a lot of people getting at a same price tag for the sets, $400 for the individual locomotive or rail car, excuse me, and then a $600 for the powered and non-powered set. And we also also are getting some light, more lighted track. In this case, it's going to be the curved lighted track for seventy-five dollars. Um, oh, it also includes the icy lake map. So if you wanted to recreate the scene where the Polar Express is going over the ice, you very well can. We also got a few more cars, such as the a hot chocolate thermos car, which is the hot metal car just re designed a flat car hot chocolate hot chocolate container car silver bell or sleigh bell mint car and also an illuminated covered bridge with some new uh, movie scenes same passenger cars nothing new here um, yeah pretty much the same polar express stuff that we've all loved and had over the years um, for more different christmas scale stuff we have a new christmas bobber a new 19th century christmas themed stuff e8s that are very stunning and also some 21 inch passenger cars to go with it and also a camelback that is looks very nice that goes with the same cars as well so i can see some people who like the christmas stuff going after that um, same christmas set sets that are themed and whatnot line chief as usual um, same hot sellers that they once were in the past still again this year um, Lionel's also reintroducing the Line Chief Plus 2.0 Pacifics um, in the Christmas themed again, and also in the Doodlebug. Still haven't seen anything from that on those just quite yet. An FT and also a Rail Bonder, which is kind of an odd little thing to have in the Christmas stuff, but some people like it. Um, some new cars this year. Here's this year's um, 2023 Christmas box car. Looks like it's got a bit of a Griswold theme or a, just a typical holiday theme of a family going out and cutting their Christmas tree for the year. Um, oh, we got some more MTH stuff and whatnot. And, ah, here we go. And some more buildings. So we've got a new hot chocolate caboose with a deck, a diner with smoke, another hut, and also a Christmasized version of the MTH diner with the... Uh, Oh, I can't remember their name. Uh, with the people coming out on skates in and out with the sounds and whatnot. Some more Christmas stuff. And then we really get into the expand your stuff. Um, got some more billboards to fit with your Wonka theme. Some Warner Brothers 100th Anniversary theater, theater and whatnot. Um, movie stuff. Same, pretty much the same accessories all around. Just a few more. Uh, MTH tooled items such like a Lionel Theater. Um, but yeah, pretty much the same stuff as last time. Nothing new, nothing different. Um, so getting into some of the more fast track stuff. Pretty much the same. But yeah. And the fast track stuff, nothing really new. It's interesting that Lionel went ahead and put back the fast track items in here, showing that what they offer, such as switches, different types of curve radiuses, and also the other accessories and also the layout options. It's been a while since Lionel showed that. And power supply, Lionel's still offering the ZWL, the w, GW180, and the CW80, which have been very hard to get these days. And surprisingly, Lionel's still offering the LCS system. Um, I really thought those kind of went out extinct when Lionel ran into the Bluetooth stuff, so it's nice to see it's they're still going strong. Um, Lionel's still offering the typical stuff, and then get into American Flyer. American Flyer is still, again, pretty much the same stuff. Got your typical sets, got your track, and that's pretty much it. Hopefully Lionel will come out come in July with some more American Flyer stuff, which they typically do. And same with HO. Usually they come out in the springtime with HO stuff and G-Scale. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this year's 2023 catalog. I honestly, overall, I thought was pretty decent considering how many scale stuff Lionel decided to produce this year. I was a little disappointed in that Lionel didn't, I mean, in the price tags of some of their sets. 
I mean, Lionel really is going off the deep end with their electronics, especially with the Vision Caboose and whatnot, but there are a few small things that people who have smaller layouts and tighter budgets can go and enjoy. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little review, and maybe I'll in the future do a video of stuff that I will be reviewing in the future of stuff that I will pre-order and whatnot. But anyway, my name is Trainmaster04, and I'll see you next time.